Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 11, and in this segment we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous segment and start taking a look at what actually, uh, what values we can actually get, what sort of results we can actually get from the fancy equation that we derived in the previous segment, which pertains to the gradient wind balance. So, just to refresh your memory, this is where we left off from the previous segment. Again, make sure you understand mathematically uh, how this, how the logic behind these statements actually works because we're going to start applying those statements to some different cases and take a look at different combinations of R and d phi dn and take a look at how those actually look in the atmosphere. So for now, we're only going to focus on the northern hemisphere. In some of your later meteorology classes, you might start worrying about what happens in the southern hemisphere. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just focus on what's going on in the northern hemisphere. So here, uh, this Coriolis parameter f is going to be positive everywhere. Now, let's take a look at a combination where this term d phi dn is positive and this term r, the radius of curvature, is positive. So multiplying these two quantities together, I get a positive value here, which means that this term under the radical is going to be smaller than f times r over 2. So that means this entire radical is going to be something smaller than f times r over 2. And you may remember from the quadratic equation that there are two solutions that you can get from the quadratic formula. A solution that is plus this term plus the square root and this term minus the square root. So let's take a look at one such combination that involves the plus term. So again, by the logic that we derived up here, this is a term this term under the radical is something that's smaller than f times r over two. So I have negative f times r over two plus something that's smaller than f r over two. So that means I've got a large negative number plus a small positive number, which is going to give me a negative number. And you may remember from the way we defined v in our natural coordinate system, v can only be positive. So if during the course of this equation we get a v value that's negative, then we have an unphysical solution to the gradient wind balance. And we'll see in another in a later segment why this turns out to be an unphysical solution. But just based on the logic that we have here and the basic mathematics of what's going on, v is negative, which is not allowed. So that's not a physically possible solution to the gradient wind balance. Now let's take a look at the negative solution. So here, again, this term under the radical is something smaller than fr over 2 by the logic that we derived in the previous segment. So if this is a small number, then we have a big negative number because remember r is positive, we have big negative number minus small negative number, which also gives us a negative number for v. So that's not a solution either. And again, later on, we'll see uh, a diagram that will illustrate why that can't be, why this uh, the combination is not possible. So this first case that we had here doesn't give us any physically meaningful solutions at all. Let's change things around a little bit. So let's take a look at another case. And here we'll take a look at the combination of d phi dn being positive, but this time we're going to make r, our radius of curvature, negative. So again, going back to our equation, so let's take a look at the plus solution. And again, if we check the logic up here, logic check. So if we multiply these two values together, we get something negative, which means our term under the radical is going to be something larger than f times r over 2. So that means this entire term here, this entire term under the radical, is something greater than f times r over 2. So we get a negative value for r. So this, in fact, becomes positive. So we get small positive value plus big positive value, which is going to give us a positive value. And since v is allowed to be positive, this is a physically possible solution. In fact, this particular scenario is something that you'll work with in your next homework assignment, just to give you a heads up. And it's a fun little solution because it shows something that uh, very rarely, if ever, happens in the atmosphere. But you'll, you'll understand why that is the case once you actually get to it. And let's take a look at the minus solution. So again, r is negative, so this is a relatively small positive number, because again, r is negative, minus big positive number. So small positive number minus big positive number gives us a negative value. So unfortunately, that is not a solution. That is not a valid solution to the gradient wind balance. 
again, that's just following the logic that we've established from the end of the previous segment. All right, let's take a look at another combination. So let's uh, make R positive this time and then set d phi d n to be negative. So again, going through the same exercise that we had before. So again, this product, R times d phi d n, that is in fact negative. So the term under the radical is larger than F times R over two. And this time R is positive. So here, this entire term here, since R is positive and we're the Northern hemisphere, this is in fact negative. So we get a small negative number plus a big positive number, which does in fact give us a positive number, which is a physically possible solution to the gradient wind balance. And if we take a look at the negative case, so again, this is the plus solution, this is the minus solution. So again, this is still a small negative number, but now this is a large positive number. A small negative number minus a large positive number, yeah, that's not going to work so well. That's going to be a negative value for V, and as we've established from the natural coordinate system, our definitions of the natural coordinate system, we can't have that. That's not physically possible. And last but not least, let's take a look at the final combination of d phi d n and r. So let's take a look at both of those being negative. So that means the product of these two, a negative times a negative, will give us a positive, which means the term under the radical is going to be something smaller than f times r over 2. It's going to be smaller than this term out in front here. So if we take a look at the consequences that has, so v is equal to negative f over 2, negative f times r over 2 plus the radical. So r is negative, so this term is positive. This term out here is positive. And this term under the radical is something that's smaller than f times r over 2. So we have something that's a big positive number plus a small positive number, which gives us a positive number. So that's a solution. That's a valid solution to the gradient wind balance. Now let's take a look at the negative case. So here we have big positive number minus small positive number. Big positive number minus small positive number is still a positive number. So this is one combination where we actually get two physically possible solutions, one a plus solution, one a minus solution. So when both these terms are negative, when d phi d n is negative and when r is negative, we get a solution that is physically possible. So that's sort of the mathematics behind the gradient wind balance. And in the final segment, we're going to take a look at what this actually represents, we're going to actually start making some conceptual diagrams to illustrate what exactly is going on here. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.